Today we're going to talk about metastatic tumors to the brain. Metastatic tumors of the brain mean that the tumor begins someplace else in the body as a, as a cancer uh, of the liver or of the lung or of the colon or, or any place else and then eventually makes its way to another organ in the body and in this case obviously the brain. Metastatic tumors can also go to the spine and we'll talk about that at another time. Although any cancer can travel, can metastasize to the brain, there are about five which are the most common. And these are cancers that begin in the lung, the breast, the kidney, the skin, and the colon. Now, as I mentioned, any cancer can go to the brain, but these are the ones that are most likely to do so. And brain metastases usually, um, or very often at least, are unnoticed because they tend to be smaller and the patient unless they're specifically screened for the possibility of brain metastasis can have the tumor and not even know it's there. The other thing about brain metastases is they tend to be multiple. It's not just one tumor, it's usually a few tumors or many tumors or even thousands of tumors and that brings up a whole issue in terms of how to treat metastatic tumors to the brain. Those that do get big enough to cause symptoms will cause symptoms either by intracranial pressure, which is a result of the tumor itself plus the swelling that surrounds the tumor or tumors. They'll present with seizures like any other brain tumor and they'll present with neurological deficit, again, like any other brain tumors. Metastatic tumors, especially certain types of metastatic tumors, are particularly likely to bleed. And the tumors that are most likely to bleed and cause their presentation by an intracranial hemorrhage would be tumors that came from the skin, melanoma, malignant melanoma, <clears throat> tumors that come from the kidney, renal cell tumors, and choriocarcinoma, which is a type of uterine tumor in women. Again, any tumor can bleed, but these are the tumors that are more likely to bleed. The treatment for metastatic tumors really depends on a number of things, and the outcome of treatment depends on a number of things. These things include the age of the patient, the general health of the patient, the presence or absence of tumors in other areas of the body, of course the wishes of the patient, the location of the tumor, and the number of tumors. Generally speaking, the fewer the tumors, the better the result. Uh, we tend to use one of two paradigms for treatment. If the tumor is big and causing pressure within the head, and is in a surgically accessible area, then we tend to recommend surgery. If the tumor or tumors are multiple, uh, but not overwhelmingly multiple, and if, especially if they're located in very sensitive areas, which would be difficult or dangerous to reach surgically, then we tend to recommend radiosurgery, stereotactic radiosurgery. Obviously, there is a whole spectrum here of choices, and sometimes we will operate on one tumor or even two tumors and then treat the others with radiation therapy. Sometimes we'll treat all of them with radiation therapy and not do any surgery at all. This is where a big controversy comes because some people feel that if you have one metastatic tumor to the brain, then you're probably going to have a multiple number of metastatic tumors to the brain. You just haven't seen them yet. So the treatment then is prophylactic. They radiate the entire brain, hoping to kill not only the tumors that are already there and visible, but also those who have not yet, who, which have not yet grown to the size where they can be visualized on a scan. We tend not to recommend whole brain radiation as the initial treatment because when you radiate the whole brain, obviously the normal brain is radiated as well as the tumors are radiated, and there can be dementia as a result of the treatment. So if we cure the cancer in the brain, but the patient winds up demented, then we didn't really do a, a whole lot of favor. 
Now, in some situations, because the number of tumors is just too great, or because the patient hasn't responded to stereotactic radiosurgery, then whole brain radiation in conjunction with stereotactic radiosurgery is a good choice. But there are a lot of choices, and the choices depend on a lot of factors, and we can talk about more of them later.